looking back on recent American history, would it be proper to ask, did the introduction of Mao's Little Red Book and Marxist-Leninist ideology in the 1960s encourage African Americans to fight adamantly for their civil rights? Welcome to Four C's One Family. As a citizen of a nation that once blatantly promoted their capture to their enslavement, African Americans still have vivid reminders of how they had to fight for their civil rights. The effects of Jim Crow laws, Ku Klux Klan attacks, and other laws and events remain in the minds of many Americans and within U.S. government policies and practices. During their struggle for equal access and treatment, African Americans and other historically subjugated members of society had to search for and promote activities that united their base and fringe supporters. Fortunately, today, a lot has been done to improve social and political discourse, which has led to enforceable laws and protections for every American citizen. Now, one group that was regarded as a significant force behind building a black community conscious in America was the Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party was founded by Huey Newton and Bobby Seals in 1966, which just happens to be the same year Mao Zedong allegedly through the misguidance of the Gang of Four, which included his wife, launched China's Cultural Revolution, which engulfed China in total confusion. While in college and after reading the selective works of Mao Zedong, Huey Newton became a believer in Mao's revolutionary communist vision. He considered Mao an admired leader who promoted a rebellious response to unequal treatment and control by a privileged financial social class. Newton became regarded as the most outspoken voice behind the Black Panther Party. He believed the grassroots implementation was needed to excite and elevate black communities above inequality. Inspired by Mao's quotations in the Little Red Book, Newton was able to build a model of a black community consciousness that he shared with other Black Panther Party members. The Little Red Book was sold in black communities to create a financial source of income for the BPP and publish a paper as well as purchase firearms. Now note, I chose to use the term financial source of income instead of something like political and to some degree spiritual source of support, which may have been much more needed. The Black Panther Party held numerous fundraisers and created free breakfast, health, and legal programs to alleviate the plight many African Americans were subjugated to. Now, the Little Red Book became an inspirational tool and was assigned as required reading for Black Panther Party members. The Little Red Book explained how Marxist-Leninist ideology could be used to help the suppressed population gain respect along with their rights. Inspiration for armed struggle against tyrannical leadership was heavily promoted in Mao's quotation that stated, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun, which frankly made U.S. government officials nervous, and I mean very nervous. Eldridge Cleaver, who I will say more about later, was the Black Panther Party Minister of Information. He wrote in a document titled On the Ideology of the Black Panther Party, and I quote, there are those who are too willing to do our thinking for us, even if it gets us killed. However, they are not willing to follow through and do our dying for us. If thoughts bring about our deaths, let them at least be our own thoughts so that we will have broken once and for all with the flunkyism of dying for every cause and every era except our own, close quote primarily in the minds of morally conscious Americans. The Black Panther Party highlighted the plight faced in African-American communities. They were also able to get the passing of laws and regulations to improve education and housing in their communities. In addition, and some would say the most significant, the party highlighted awareness of police profiling and brutality. The Black Panther Party took it upon itself to fight vigorously to protect their rights under the U.S. Constitution the rights of free speech, and to bear arms were the two most referred to parts of the U.S. Constitution. And maybe because of this, they found themselves involved in several confrontations with the police and government agencies, 
which resulted in physical altercations that ended in the deaths of police officers and multiple members of the Black Panther Party. In a well-publicized event in 1969, a raid on a Black Panther Party holdout resulted in the death of a party member in a shootout that later showed that the police fired nearly 80 shots, while the party member only fired one. Events like this and others may have been the reason why FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover announced that the Black Panther Party was the greatest threat to U.S. national security. He forwarded his concerns to other governmental agencies to infiltrate, denounce, and disassemble leftist organizations. Some reports even stated that the interrogation of leftist organization members was suggested. In part two, I'll talk about some other directions the Black Panther Party and its members took to broaden its appeal, but later may have caused it to become overburdened and implode. If you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan, and remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.